My dear students, today I would be taking up two important topics which are as a result of DNA damage and you are already aware that there are those two important topics which are frequently asked and one of the topics I would be taking up initially is xeroderma pigmentosa and the second topic would be Bloom syndrome. Now these are very important from the examination viewpoint. I have been repeating most of the important topics which have been asked in the last two years. So first of all, we take xeroderma pigmentosa. So as far as xeroderma is concerned, you have to understand that we have got the DNA and DNA can be damaged. There can be a ultraviolet induced DNA damage. Usually, there are inherent mechanisms in our body. We just repair the DNA by its own. Now imagine that there is something wrong, that we lose the capacity to repair the DNA. So basically, zero derma is a problem in which the body is not able to repair the ultraviolet induced DNA damage. So that's very important. So it basically comes under the defects of DNA repair defects. A simple one-liner can be asked, xeroderma pigmentosa is a disease of which category? So you have to remember that it is a DNA repair defect. Now what this inhibition of DNA repair does, it makes the body susceptible to various important changes and first of all I would be going that there is this important fact that it is a defect in the initiation of DNA repair so it affects the initial stages of DNA repair in most of the cases and in some cases there is the S phase DNA repair defect once the DNA is in the S or the synthesis phase at that point of time certain important changes can occur but you have to remember questions frequently asked are what are the important associations in xeroderma pigmentosa so you have to remember that mostly these patients are susceptible to skin conditions and what are the various important dermatological features which these patients can have you have to remember that they can have keratosis or they can also develop keratocanthomas in addition to malignant skin tumors like the basal cell carcinoma of the skin, like the squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, as well as the melanoma, malignant melanoma, various types. In addition, you have to remember that they can be having those telinjectases, vascular dilatations, or angiomas. So you can have a very large range of dermatological manifestations in xeroderma pigmentosa. In addition, some patients might have photophobia. Children born with xeroderma pigmentosa can have additional features like short stature. That's very important. In addition to microcephaly, and they would just be more liable to have mental retardation. Then they can develop ataxia. So we can have the xeroderma pigmentosa causing multiple problems and mainly manifest as dermatological problems. Now, we can do the culture of the fibroblast to detect the DNA damage. That is the most apt test for xeroderma pigmentosa. And the patients have to be protected from ultraviolet radiations. That's a very important step in the management of patients with xeroderma pigmentosa because the clinical facts, other modalities, we would be taking up in our other classes. So this is something about xeroderma pigmentosa. Now going on to the other spectrum is a similar disorder which we call as Bloom syndrome. And Bloom syndrome is basically a chromosomal breakage disorder. So there is this unusual breakage of the chromosomes. 
Now, what is important about it is that it is autosomal recessive pride. It follows autosomal recessive inheritance, like xeroderma pigmentosa. So, Bloom syndrome is following this AR inheritance pattern, and it is more common in Jews, especially Asian Jews. So, you have to remember those two facts. Now, what is important in Bloom syndrome is that these patients are usually more susceptible to have a photosensitivity. They usually have a photosensitivity to rash. In addition to that, the malignancies are increased. It predisposes an individual to multiple malignancies like the leukemias, like the lymphomas, like the squamous cell carcinomas, as well as nephroblastomas. We can have a whole range of malignancies erupting in patients with Bloom syndrome. In action, you have to remember that these patients can also present with lesions like simple telangiectasis, in addition to cafe lab spots. So, you have to remember these things. So, xeroderma pigmentosa happens to be a DNA repair defect, and Bloom syndrome, which predisposes the individual to multiple malignancies, many organs malignancies is basically a chromosome breakage disorder. So that is important about these two important diseases. This is the biochemical aspect and a bit of a medical concept about these diseases and they have been frequently asked. I hope that you would catch up with these two important topics and this will be very helpful to you as far as your examinations are concerned. Thanks a lot.